You know, the upper Midwest is home to some of the most productive agricultural soil in North America. Among the many challenges facing us farmers, keeping our fertilizer on our fields is a big concern. Nobody thinks they have erosion. You can't see two tons of soil loss when it's sheet erosion because if you took two tons and spread that oil out over an entire acre, we're talking about a sheet of paper. Of course we understand that reducing nutrient runoff and minimizing erosion saves us money. But in addition, those of us who farm in the Mississippi watershed have been contributing to some issues that we can't even see. Some are seriously affecting commercial fishermen and the health of our water in the Gulf of Mexico. I really don't think they have any, any idea that, that whatever they put into the ground up here can travel so far down, down south and, and, and affect people. You put a teaspoon here and a teaspoon here, and the first thing you know, you got a gallon. And that's been the biggest problem. And the Mississippi River ends where they live. And what's in that river is what they have to live with. They don't have any choice. Nutrients, especially nitrogen, flowing down river to the Gulf, feed massive algae and plant blooms that suck the oxygen right out of the water, making huge areas unable to support fish and the ecosystems in which they live. The fishermen call it the dead zone, and they're forced to fish farther and farther away from port. The dead zone in the Gulf of Mexico is about 10,000 square miles. It's about the size of Connecticut. If you go out in the dead zone to fish, you don't see a fish around. It's really costing our industry a lot. When they say dead zone, that's exactly what it is. Uh, that's just going to have to be changed. That's the only way it's going to make a difference. Whether we, we like it or not, it, it's, a, it's a fact. With the future of fishing threatened in the Gulf Coast, Michael Fields Agricultural Institute invited some seasoned Louisiana fishermen and their families to Wisconsin to meet farmers committed to finding solutions through conservation practices. Celebrating our dedication to conserving our resources for the next generation, these shrimpers and crabbers graciously caught, hauled to Wisconsin, and prepared a seafood dinner for us Wisconsin farmers. I've always been a commercial fisherman. I've tried just about everything in the field. I started when I was 13 with my uncle, and I'm going to be 70, so quite a few years. I've been actually running the company probably uh, 35 years. Now mom and dad kind of stays home. The next day, the fishermen joined in on a tour of three farms that are actively conserving soil and reducing nutrient runoff. This particular group of neighboring farms received a state watershed grant to work together to mitigate runoff. The watershed group, it's a group of my neighbors that uh, got together and decided to try and implement more practices to help not eliminate erosion, but uh, try to minimize it. Having farmers implement cover crops, we use them to hold our soil in place and hold our nutrients in place so it doesn't erode, so it doesn't leave our, leave our soil. I don't want to chase my soil down the road. The goal is to have something green and growing every day that you can have green and growing, and in the wintertime have something covering that soil. It'll boost your yields. If you're not losing fertilizer, then it's going into the crop. It can improve your bottom line. It can cut your costs. We wanted to do a field demonstration to um, show how the, uh, the no-till drill worked. We don't work the ground at all. We just go in with the drill and plant directly into the, into the soil to uh, not disturb it. You know, if you, if you don't want the soil to move, don't move the soil. We shouldn't be using tillage, conventional tillage and chemicals. We should hold that soil in place. We use these streams to water livestock, and so we've had to figure out how to take care of them. And so the stream crossings are essential. 
determine where the livestock want to cross and they'll cross where they can see the bottom. They'll cross where there's already some stones and they're used to doing that. So if you come in and put more breaker rock, big, big stones in and, and spread that around, now you create a natural crossing for those livestock. What we can do to improve that is allowable soil loss Farmers have numerous resources which can help them gain access to information, funding, and technical assistance, such as the County Conservation Office, Extension, and the Natural Resources Conservation Service. We have a variety of programs. Uh, the Environmental Quality Incentives Program helps reduce soil erosion, improve water quality, expand wildlife habitat activities. But for those landowners who are already doing a good job, we have other programs like the Conservation Stewardship Program. And that program basically recognizes that you are a good steward and gives you some reward for that and gives you further incentives to be even a better conservation steward of that and have that good land ethic. Conservation practices will help maintain the heritage of our farming and fishing culture of the United States. I think what they're doing up here is really a great start because if it doesn't start in a place like this, it's never going to change. I understand they formed the land, but we more or less, if you want to look at it, we formed the sea, and, and we know, I don't think it's any different. The economy, the way it's getting, if people don't start sticking together and make things better, we're in for a rough, rough road for our grandkids and great-grandkids, and that's what I think about. You know, I want generations and generations to have what I have, and I'm sure up here, they, they want generations and generations to have what they have.